Hello and welcome to the video game sound design series on Massive. So like I said in the last video, this is all about video game and film sound design. This is not about creating EDM dubstep wubs and basses and leads and all that. There's tons of tutorials out there for that. That's great. But honestly, there's nothing out there for creating special effects and sound design using these synths. So that's what we're going into. So in today's video, we're going to talk about these three oscillators, the intensity knobs, as well as these filters. All right, so let's get started. So we have three oscillators, like I've mentioned, and you can turn them on and off using these top left areas to click them on and off. If it's lit up blue, it's on. And like I mentioned in the last video, we have a ton of different wavetables or groups of samples, basically, to play with. And right now I'm using a default sound. So I went to file and I hit new sound to create a blank space. So when I have this default sound, it sounds like this. And we all know that the WT position knob changes what we're hearing. It changes which wave we're playing back depending on the position in the wavetable we're in or group of waves, group of sounds. So. Now let's talk about the intensity knob, which is where things start to get interesting. Now the intensity knob changes its functionality depending on how we assign it. So how do, how do we assign it? We go to this top down menu up here where you can see it says spectrum and you can choose your different modes. And right now we're gonna stick with spectrum and I'll explain each of these. So the spectrum mode allows our intensity knob to reduce the high frequencies we're hearing. So if I turn this all the way down and then gradually turn the knob up as I play a note, you'll hear that the high frequencies of this waveform start to come back in. So it behaves very similarly to a low pass filter. That's what the spectrum mode does, that's it. It's the simplest one. Now we have some bend modes here as well. Bend plus, bend minus plus, and bend minus. So let's go over each of these. The explanations are a little complicated and I'll do my best, but really what matters is how it sounds. So if I take this intensity knob and turn it all the way to the left into bend plus mode, you're gonna hear no difference. It's gonna be an unaltered waveform. So nothing really happened there. But what's up next is pretty interesting. So what bend plus mode allows us to do when I turn this intensity knob up to the right, it takes this waveform, whichever one we're using, and it makes the readout, the speed of the start and the end of this waveform, whichever one we're on, faster. So it shrinks the amount of time that the start and the end of this waveform plays, and it stretches the middle out to compensate. So that may not mean much to you, but it does change the sound. So if I turn this to nothing, and then gradually turn it up, you'll hear a difference in the sound. Now it's subtle for this one, but if I switch to another one, let's go to electric, you'll hear a difference. So again, it's making the start and the end of the waveform faster and it stretches out the middle to compensate. So we're getting a longer middle and shorter starts and ends with bend plus. Bend minus is exactly the opposite. It takes the start and ends and stretches them out, makes it so the readout is slower. We spend more time hearing the start and end of the waveform and it takes the middle of the waveform and shrinks it, it plays it faster. So all the way to the left, the waveform is unaltered. And as I gradually turn it to the right, you'll hear that the start and ends slow down and the middle speeds up. And again, you don't necessarily need to memorize the technical definition of these, but you should know how they sound and playing around with this, experimenting with all these waveforms will be very helpful for that. And if you want to quickly switch between waveforms, just click these left and right arrows to audition different sounds. 
So we have a lot of variety in here. I'll go to grown for for this video. So that's what bend minus does. Now let's go to bend minus plus, which is a mixture of the two. When I put this knob of intensity in the middle, and I did that by just double clicking it, we're hearing the unaltered waveform. That's just what it sounds like. But with bend minus plus mode, we get both bend minus and bend plus mode built into this. So all the way to the left, I'm in bend minus mode, where the slow readout, the, the slower starts and ends are happening. And all the way to the right, I'm in bend plus mode, where I'm getting a faster, shorter, quicker readout of the starts and ends of the waveform and a stretched middle. Again, you don't necessarily need to memorize the technical definitions of what these are doing, just know that it changes the sound and you have this option. All right, so that's what the bend mode does. And lastly, we have the formant mode, which emulates the sound of human vowel sound, so A, E, I, O, and U. So if I play around with this, you'll hear kind of the emulation of that kind of talking synthesizer sound. And that's what formant mode does. So pretty straightforward. The bend ones are a little more complicated, and spectrum is also pretty straightforward. So that's what those do, and we'll play with them quite a bit in future videos. And next up for this video, let's talk about filters. So we have filter one and filter two over here in the center. Now to activate a filter, we need to assign one. So both of them are on by default. You can see with that light blue dot, but they're not assigned to anything. There's no filter on either of them. And to do that, we just click this drop down menu and click any filter we want. There are some standard ones like low pass and high pass. And there's some not so standard ones like acid. So let's go to a low pass filter and I'll explain all of these in greater detail in future videos. And now if I play a sound, you'll hear that there's a filter applied. And I can use this cutoff knob to change how the filter is behaving. <laughs> And I can take this resonance knob to give a peek at where the cutoff frequency is. And the cutoff basically just determines which frequencies we're going to start cutting our sound off at. In the case of a low pass filter, the lower it is, the lower frequencies we're going to hear, the higher it is, the more high frequencies we're going to hear. And again, the resonance knob puts a little peak in volume at where the cutoff frequency is. Which can yield some funny and interesting effects. All right. So we have all these different types of filters and we have two. So we can actually have two filters going on at the same time. So if I apply another filter, let's do a daft filter, which sounds pretty interesting. If I play right now, and then turn this filter 2 off, we're going to hear that this filter 2 isn't actually doing anything right now. And the reason for that is twofold. By default, the filter 2 volume, this volume slider over here, is down. Each filter has a different volume slider that we can use to send a different amount of signal to our final mix. So if this filter two is turned all the way down, we're not gonna hear anything coming out of it. We're just gonna hear filter one. But if I turn this all the way up, we're still not hearing filter two. And the reason for that is this mix slider. This mix slider determines how much of each filter we're hearing. So if I turn it all the way up, we're only hearing filter one, which is why it says mix one and mix two. All the way at the bottom, we're only hearing filter two. All the way at the top. And we can put it somewhere in the middle so we hear both at the same time. Now what you wanna watch out for is these little sliders to the right of each oscillator. You can see at the top it says F1 and at the bottom it says F2. 
We can also determine from here how much we want to send to filter one versus filter two. So we can send only to filter two, or we can send only to filter one, or somewhere in between, which is what it is by default. And we'll go into details of why and all that sort of good stuff soon. One more thing I want to point out about this filter area is you're going to see this slider where it says SER and PAR, serial or parallel. By default, it's turned all the way down to parallel, meaning your sound from oscillator one is going to filter one and filter two at the same time. It's not going from one into the other. But if I turn this all the way to serial, it's going from oscillator one, two, and three, or whichever oscillators you have turned on. So in this case, it's going from oscillator one to filter one, then to filter two, and then out of our speakers. So depending on what you want, maybe you want to take a low pass filtered sound, put it through another filter, and then hear something. Or you might want to split the signal and hear the sound going through filter one and filter two at the same time, and then hear the combined result. So I'm gonna play with this knob and you might hear a bit of a difference. Subtle, but as we get more and more complicated sounds, this will actually make a pretty substantial difference. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for these oscillators. That's the basics. You now know how to use them. And that's it for the basics of these filters and how they work. We're gonna go more into this in later videos as we make cooler and cooler sounds. And in the next video, we're gonna go into modulation oscillator, noise, and feedback. And that's where things start to get really, really interesting and start sounding really cool. So thanks so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.